All right, brothers and sisters, let's be clear. Let's be in focus when it comes to end time Bible prophecy. That's a little bit better. Now, I want to ask all of you, the entire situation between Russia and its military, its military might and force in the Ukraine and Crimea, now drawing in the United States of America and China as well, how does this play a part when we're looking at end time Bible prophecy, the imminent rapture of the church and conflict, a possible third world war to usher in the biblical antichrist who will bring a false peace and sign a seven year peace treaty. Let me take you to the headlines. There's a video I'm going to play that for you all in a moment. Um, get my mouse to work here. Now, one of the most popular headlines on mainstream media news today is Russia tells the Ukraine, surrender or else. Now, we're hearing about uh, Vladimir Putin is pulling some uh, troops uh, out from the border. You know, we got John Kerry uh, on his way there. And I think it's just kind of play. Uh, Vladimir Putin's kind of playing a chess game with the United States. He is not going to uh, adhere to any threats from Barack Obama and the Obama regime. Believe me. Here's the headline. I'll put the link below and we'll play the video in a moment. Now, Ukraine the conflict. Vladimir Putin said he hopes Russia won't have to use force in the Ukraine. And personally, I got a feeling it may come down to that. This is coming out right now. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Moscow reserves the right to use all means to protect Russians in Ukraine, but hopes Russia won't have to use force. If I decide to use armed forces, it will be in line with international law, Putin said. During a news conference on Tuesday, Putin described the recent turmoil in Ukraine as an anti-constitutional coup and said that while the Ukrainian parliament was legitimate, the acting president was not. Putin also noted that if Ukraine holds new elections, the results will not be acknowledged by Russia. The article goes on uh, to boast uh, the former president and how Vladimir Putin uh, believes he had nothing to do whatsoever. Anyway, shape or form with the slaughter of the protesters and the uprising. Let's go to the video right now. I'll be right back. It is officially Russia's biggest confrontation with the West since the Cold War. Over the weekend, Russian forces seized Crimea, the Black Sea Peninsula in the southeast of Ukraine. And some breaking news, Russia is now demanding that Ukraine surrender two Ukrainian warships in Crimea. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry says Russians ordered the crew to surrender within the hour or face Russians storming and seizing the ships and crew. Now, on Saturday, Putin secured permission from Russia's parliament to use military force to, quote, protect Russian citizens in Ukraine. As Russian citizens, as Russian troops, I should say, crossed the border, Putin invoked the same justification he used to launch the 2008 invasion of Georgia. This happened again in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukraine mobilized its troops for war on Sunday as Washington threatened to isolate Russia economically after President Putin declared he had the right to invade. Now, this is how Ukraine's new prime minister reacted. This is the red alert. Uh, this is not the threat. This is actually the declaration of war to my country. We are on the brink of the disaster. There was no any reason for the Russian Federation to invade Ukraine. And we believe that our Western partners and the entire global community will support the territorial integrity and unity of Ukraine. Poland has thrown itself into the fray as well. It is admitted to moving tanks and troops to take up positions along its border with Ukraine, but insists it is simply part of a previously scheduled exercise. In a rare open meeting, a second emergency session was convened on Saturday at the United Nations in New York, 
While there was no agreement, there were a lot of accusations. Here's what the Ukrainian ambassador to the UN had to say. We urge all member states of the United Nations to demonstrate solidarity with the Ukrainian nation to protect sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country, to protect the very basic principles of the United Nations, currently brutally violated by a permanent uh, uh, a state, um, uh, a permanent member of the Security Council. Meanwhile, Russia's ambassador acknowledged Putin had asked for authorization for a military force, but emphasized they have yet to send forces. He also felt it was important to make this distinction. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact it says on the territory of Ukraine, not against Ukraine, as my Ukrainian colleague said, until the normalization of the political situation in this country. Samantha Power, America's ambassador to the UN, responded in kind. Actions speak louder than words. Early this morning, the Russian Duma acted to authorize the use of military force in Ukraine. This is as dangerous as it is destabilizing. We are deeply disturbed by reports this morning of Russian military intervention into Crimea. This intervention is without legal basis. Indeed, it violates Russia's commitment to protect the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine. It is time for the Russian intervention in Ukraine to end. But it's not just diplomats discussing the troubling developments in Ukraine. Twitter data on Twitter sent out a link to the Twitter conversation about Ukraine as it spread throughout the month of February. Just take a look. This is from the beginning of February. As you can see, the ticker moving to the right. You see the conversation swelling around the world. But take a look how the conversation grows on the 19th. Currently, we're on 18, and there you have the 19th. Now, now that Russia is in control of a majority of Crimea, the focus has shifted to eastern parts of Ukraine, where most ethnic Ukrainians speak Russian as a native language. Protests continued during the weekend as Russians, uh, you know, I should say Russian flags were hoisted above government buildings. And on Monday, around 2,000 pro-Russian demonstrators occupied the first floor of the regional government building in Ukraine's city of Donetsk. They chanted slogans including Russia, Berkut, shame, shame to the government, Speakers also called out to the crowd asking who in attendance was Russian. And as you can see, people raised their hands in agreement. So, Maxim, you know, we're seeing obviously a divide. And David, you know, this morning, Russia's Prime Minister uh, Medvedev spoke to U.S. Uh, Vice President Joe Biden. We know Obama and Putin spoke uh, at length, I think, for 90 minutes over this weekend. I mean, how serious is this escalation, especially as Maxim outlines all those uh, divisions and potential divisions? I mean, is war inevitable? Is Ukraine at war with Russia? Well, it looks to it looks to me like war may break out, and it may break out very soon if the Russians have told the Ukrainian garrisons to surrender, and if they don't surrender, and if the Russians then use force and people are killed. Uh, I in the in the present situation, it seems to me that uh, it's very likely that that uh, armed confrontations will result between Russians and uh, Ukrainians. It's, uh, it's a deliberate attack on Ukrainian territory in violation of their sovereignty. Uh, I, it's hard to see what else they can do. And David, you know, with that in mind, Ukraine launched a treason case on Sunday after firing the head of the Navy who surrendered his headquarters in the Crimean port of Sevastopol on his second day on the job. Denis Beretsovsky was shown, as you can see right here on Russian television, swearing allegiance to the pro-Russian reg uh, regional leaders of Crimea. Maxim, you know, when you look at this footage, based on what David just, uh, you know, said about uh, war seeming inevitable, I mean, how significant is this, you know, uh, just two days uh, in uh, to, to give this kind of declaration? What does it suggest to you? You know, it's just mind-blowing for a lot of locals to, you know, the first time in their lives to face the possibility of any kind of wars. But, you know, the, the very important thing to keep in mind that this conflict is uh, barely about ethnic lines or, you know, language or lines. Russian language is not a problem for in Ukraine in any kind of provinces. I'm a Russian-speaking uh, non-Ukrainian citizens that live for you know uh two decades here and i had never like literally never had any kind of problem speaking russian or you know use this right to speak russian and it's uh it's not a problem here i think the problem is that this uh, uh very um dangerous precedent when russia is uh, taking over uh, another country's territory 
uh, by breaking international law. And it's not a problem for those provinces to go in referendum and to right. vote to, to secession. All right. Are we on the brink of war? Be sure to join us today, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time. I'll put the link below for our service over at a live stream while we get into this in great detail. Join us 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time on live stream as we go live, a live chat room. I'll put the link below. Go to the website, trumpetofgodministries.com, trumpetofgodministries.com, and the link is right on the front page. See everyone at 12 o'clock noon. Leave me comments, everyone. Subscribe. <laughs>